Hi everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. This is Mike and this is our another top 10 mocks video where we choose the best mocks of the passing week and show it in some of our top 10 fashion. Now remember that the ranking is not really important. I really uh, choose those mocks on a subjective matter. So feel free to switch them around if you think one is better than the other. At the end of the episode, I'm showing your fan creations that you guys are sending to our fan mocks email. The email is right now on the screen as well as the rules that are available in the description below. And uh, before we jump into the top 10 mocks for this week, I just want to update you guys on our web store. The latest mock that we have added is the Giga Horse from Mad Max. This one is brought to you by Nicola, the same guy that brought you the Thunder Joe and the War Rig from Mad Max as well. This one is a very nice display model. It's in a double figure scale. And every purchase of the instructions and parses that you guys make supports our channel here and also the designers that are bringing you those mocks. And of course, there's a full video on that mock on our channel. Jack posted this on Friday. Alrighty, let's get into the top 10 mocks for this week. The first one is coming from our very favorite, Ayain Heath. And this time he made a simple build for a moody Groot. That is the teenage version of Groot that is appearing in the Infinity War movie. And I think that is the beginning of a series of pictures of this guy in different locations. So far we have only two of them. Groot is portrayed nicely with his headphones and the uh, game pad or Game Boy in his hands. That is the way we see him the most in the newest movie. And I'm looking forward to what locations Ian chooses for his next photos. I like this mock so much because it's so expressive given that it's a very simple build. But still very very enjoyable. Going up to number 9 we have the builder Andreas Lenander and the mock I want to feature here is his windmill or as he calls it the wandmill. This one gets the reward for the best part usage in this week's episode. As you can see the blades of the windmill are the wands from the Harry Potter series but before they are removed from the casing. You get two wands per minifigure per a Harry Potter set and I think that is the perfect look for a small micro scale windmill. Absolutely brilliant and if you can think of a better piece usage for this specific part Post your ideas in the comment section below. I really cannot think of one right now. And keeping it micro scale for number 8, we have the builder Oki Space Ranger. And in this one, he presents the micro scale Quidditch pitch. For many of us, including myself, this was a part that was missing from the micro scale Hogwarts Castle, which is an amazing build. And I guess this build fills up the void perfectly. It is a full pitch with all the towers for respective uh, houses of Hogwarts. I like the colorfulness of it, but that is how a Quidditch pitch should look like, definitely. And right now, I'm really thinking of building this thing just to add it to our Hogwarts castle. All right, let's move away from micro scale for now. We have number seven coming from Roland Smith. And this vignette is called the peaceful place for peaceful hobbies. A very Ninja Go looking like build. The first fact I noticed and the first impression I had is that this would fit very well with the latest Ninja Go City and Ninja Go Docks sets. As the shoreline here and the type of building used is very well matching the latter one. The building itself seems to look like a, maybe a Japanese tea house of some sorts. There seems to be an interior on the lower level and somewhat of a patio to drink your tea at the upper level. There is a small Japanese garden to the side and an artist painting something on its stand. And it's overall definitely a peaceful place just like the title of the mock says. Oh and there is of course the cherry blossom tree behind the building. For number 6 I do have actually uh, two exequo builds because they are kind of in the same topic. The first one here is a Niffler coming from Dogod Brick Design. Seems like a life size Niffler to be honest. That cute creature was part of the Fantastic Beasts lore and he had a thing going for all the shining things. The mock comes with a very nice build for the Niffler himself, wearing a bunch of bracelets and other gold stuff. And the stand is in the form of this small ring capsule and also the suitcase that is portraying probably the Newt's suitcase. I really like the style that this is presented and the designer even built a tiny safe that fits a small mold for the Niffler inside. And this one actually can fit in the big Niffler's belly because that's how this guy hides his shiny things to take them away. And the second build in the same spot is from a different builder. This is coming from Chris office and the creature here is the demi guys quite surprisingly those builds look very similar in the presentation form and I think these scale very well to each other the demi guys is a different creature is a type of a ape or monkey that has the ability to cloak or just turn invisible when threatened this one comes with a similar stand to be honest and there is a bunch of candy next to it I think but that is not as known of a creature as the niffler from the fantastic beast but still I do like this build a lot moving up to number five we have the touch of ship timber in this spot because ship timber is coming just around the corner and this build is coming from Noble Bun that is called the Mansin class escort frigate and is quite unique when you first look at it. Noble Bun is known for creating ships that are completely studless or mostly studless through the entire builds and the shapes are also quite unique. 
I like the engines in the back, they shape kind of resembles the arc reactor for Iron Man for some reason for me. And the angles of those massive armor plates on the sides are actually giving this ship a very distinctive look. The use of copper elements inside for some gribbling. And in the end I think this one looks maybe like something taken from the Homeworld RTS game series. And for number 4 I have a very nice build of a Star Wars type for you. I've seen this scene done in mocks a few times already, one of the most notable ones was the one from Marshall Banana. And this one is coming from a one case and this is the Empire over Jedha City or more specifically an Imperial Destroyer over Jedha City. A much bigger build than the ones I've seen before. I love the landscaping design here with a number of used wedged plates from dark tan through brown and through orange brown as well and you have to appreciate the crazily detailed look of the city itself in micro scale. The inverted roller skate pieces portraying the Zeta class shuttles flying towards the destroyer are a very nice touch and the ship itself is also quite impressive. In this scale it's really hard to achieve those angles and get the bridge portrayed in such detail but one case pulled it off and it looks really amazing. There is also a very nice integration of the Jedi Temple as one of the posts holding the destroyer above the city and it's overall a very nice display that every Star Wars fan would crave. Number 3, this is coming from Josh David, along with Jason from JK Brickworks, he's a very well known uh, kinetic sculpture designer. The newest one from him is the Lego Ox Pulling Plow Kinetic Sculpture. I'm gonna link uh, his video below for the full operation of the build and this one as you can see is showing a man operating an old school plow. The ox is fully kinetic as well, you can see the four legs moving and the whole movement of the entire sculpture seems very natural as you expected. Really nice and I always appreciate the the thought going behind those builds. Alrighty, number two is coming from a builder named Alien Cat. I don't think I featured this builder before, but it's a really nice build he has here to feature him right now. This is called The Last Place on Earth, and what you can see, it is somewhat of a fabulant build. At least the fabulant are the creatures that are portrayed in this set. This seems to be somewhat of an alien lander, or just a survey vessel of some sort that landed on a watery surface. And there is so many details going on here with those ramps and all the gribbling, the machinery there, using for this landing mission or just scout mission that it's really hard to describe. There's a bunch of pictures under the link if you want to check those in full detail and I think this one seems to be telling the beginning of a longer story. Very cool build and I think quite deserving the number two spot for this week. And number one is also a sci-fi build. I don't think this one goes into the ship temper build. Maybe it does. It's quite a big build to be honest. It has to be over a hundred stats long to be featured as a ship temper build. This one is coming from Ad Norel and the name is the Val Zalir. It is a massive starship or a vessel, kind of gives me those Star Wars vibes. Looks a bit Corellian if you look closely, I mean those colors maybe and the shape of the engines. And I really like so many things about it, especially the shape for the cockpit is a bit uh, moved downwards, like an angle is there. And the massive stabilizers in the back are giving this somewhat of a starfighter or even a jet fighter, a modern one, look. It does come with a solid stand and a number of interesting gribbling techniques in the middle, using some technical elements if you can see correctly. And for me, it could take place very well in the upcoming episode 9 movie and I think it would fit quite fine. A very cool looking ship and uh, looking at that one I cannot really wait for the upcoming ship temper builds that will be just around the corner. And before we jump to the fan mocks I just want to show you the mock of all mocks, the mother of all mocks made by Lego this week that Jack also mentioned in the news. They basically made a life-size Technic Bugatti Chiron one-to-one -one replica that's actually driving using 2300 Technic Power Functions motors. Let that sink in it's absolutely insane, I think that is the most impressive LEGO build they have done, like, ever. Oh, and uh, here is what Jack has to say about this build. It's Le Bugatti Chalau! Hell, hell! Le Bugatti Chalau! Time for your top 10 mocks, guys. Thank you so much for submitting all these awesome builds this week. If you want to submit more for next week, the email and the rules can be found below this video. Thanks so much for following those simple rules. And also for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, you can always leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click the bell button to get notified for every new video. Thanks so much for watching again, guys. It was Mike, and I'll see you next time on Brick Vault.